Welcome back. Well, we spoke to the Lieutenant Governor before the break, and now we continue the conversation with another health expert. That's right. Dr. Scott Miskovich, president and founder of Premier Medical Group Hawaii, joins us live tonight. And thanks so much for being with us tonight, Dr. Miskovich. Nice to be with you. Thanks. And you know, today the CDC said it's planning to finally update its guidance for some of the people with weakened immune systems to get a third shot sooner. So after three months instead of six months, and what are your thoughts on that? And what do you tell your patients who fall in this category? Well, first of all, this is good news, but it's long, long overdue. You know, we've known for a very long period of time that, you know, people with weakened immune systems may, you know, at minimum require three shots to get up to where they need to be. And then many of us are ordering a fourth and a fifth almost every three months based on data. So this is very, very good news. Now, hopefully that translates out to all of the organizations that are giving the shots, because I'm also getting information from the field that, especially at the pharmacies, they'll go in and they don't have any idea that they're supposed to be giving these shots. So we need to get communication out to everyone. And I hope our Department of Health begins to communicate so everybody knows who they are. I mean, we probably have 20,000 people or more in our state that will qualify. and just so everyone understands, these are people with um, cancers or on certain types of medications, um, which is a big category, or have recovered for can with cancers, and certain people um, with different um, uh, medications that you might not even think, like immunosuppressants for, like arthritis even can do it. So, and What do people need to know, just to clarify, about which vaccines this is talking about, or is it all across the board? Well, it's across the board, but I think right now we're primarily uh, giving just the mRNA, the Moderna and Pfizer. There still is some J&J &J out, but that is not being used much because of some of the questions that have been brought up with it. If you've had it, you're still safe, but they're not really offering it. So this is Moderna and Pfizer. And along those lines, the other news that came out today is we finally have Moderna it is fully FDA approved. So that should take all the question away from that right now, but it's those two vaccines. Okay. You know, pretty much since the start of this pandemic, you've been the go-to guy for many of our state and city leaders. I remember you attending press conferences. Um, uh, the death toll passed the 1,200 mark today for Hawaii, 12, 1,200, 1,204 COVID-related deaths so far. And, you know, it seems like the case counts are going down, but the deaths are going up. Is that something we should be worried about? Um. Every death is something we should be worried about. And I think most of us who have been living our lives trying to uh, prevent COVID and uh, being on the front lines really look at this and, and, and feel that we could probably have prevented half of those deaths in our state if we would have changed some of the things we were doing and changed some of the communication and policy. So yes, it's very concerning to me. And then second, the deaths will continue. You know, we're going to probably at least see another 200 or more deaths that will lag beyond this and uh, beyond the uh, the surge. So, um, I I just feel that you know every death is a is a death that should not happen if we could prevent it, and. You know, we have to look right now at, uh, you know, boosters and we have to look at the, the vaccinations as one of our keys. But now the masks, as we're, we we talked about earlier today, are so crucial. And, um, you know, we need to keep our message consistent at the state level. You know, I'm very disappointed that we just went over the curve. And instead of letting people bury their dead, we're already saying like, oh, you know, Omicron, like it's gone. No, we may have a long, slow backside. It may not drop and there still may be risk for people um, to contract this, going to the hospital and to die. Let's just give an honest message to the people of Hawaii, which is there will be more variants and keep your guard up, you know, keep it up. And speaking of that, you know, we've been talking about the stealth variant uh, of Omicron this week. So what is the situation right now as far as people getting vaccinated and boosted? And, and what else do we need to know about the stealth variant? How concerning is it? 
Well, it's concerning and the data is still early. Um, our biggest location across the world is Denmark, which it, it, is, uh, it is by far the dominant uh, variant in Denmark. It's also the dominant variant in the Philippines, which is obviously close to the people of Hawaii. Um, and it's in India. Those are the three big countries. It's in over 25 states right now. It is at least 50 to 120 percent more contagious. Now, the thing that worries me and worries, I think, most most experts is it has 28 different mutations compared to Omicron 1. That's a very big jump, right? And what we look at it as an issue where it doesn't seem more virulent, like it's going to kill more people, but it is more contagious, so therefore it could rise. And what worries us is what does that lead to? We know there will be more variants. And as we saw with Omicron 1, it was so different than Delta. And with 28 new variants, many of them up in that spike protein, we hope it's not a launching point for another more contagious or more virulent var uh, variant. So keep our eyes on it. We don't have a lot of extra data because it is just spreading right now. Wow. And you know, this week, Pfizer and BioNTech, they announced they're requesting emergency use authorization for their COVID vaccine for children ages six months to five years old. So what's your advice for parents, you know, that are considering whether or not to get their young child vaccinated? There might be some apprehension, you know, as far as long-term effects. Well, I don't know, um, Marissa, if I would say as much as long-term effects. I think a lot of it's unknown, right? That's what parents are wondering. Well, here's my advice um, to parents right now. If your child has any health care risk, you know, talk to your pediatrician. If your child has like chronic lung conditions, so God forbid has had cancers or is on any special um, uh, medications or has repeated hospitalizations, you should get your child immunized, right? Now, if your child is perfectly healthy, there is starting to be questions, especially across the world where access to vaccines might not be as great, uh, to say, is it really necessary? Does it pose that much risk that we should be vaccinating the children at that age? I will admit, you know, we're just getting the data out of the trial, so we don't really know that for sure. But it's crystal clear if you have a child with health care risks, talk to your pediatrician or doctor, and I would highly recommend it. Um, ultimately, I do believe we are going to be getting these children vaccinated at this age. And I think as a parent, I think most of us will want more longitudinal data. We'll want to see how it goes instead of a three month or four month. We're going to want to see a year out or something like that. But um, I think it is very safe so far. They already played with the dose once. The early dose they gave was too small. They had to push the dose up to start getting um, enough adequate antibodies produced. So we'll get, we'll get it to the point where I do think it will be available and it'll be a regular shot also. Good for parents to know. Yeah. Well, as always, we really appreciate your yeah. time tonight, Dr. Scott Miskovich, Premier Medical Group Hawaii. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Have a good night. Thanks, you too.